I don't see myself. <laughs> Am I supposed to? Uh, yes. Waiting for Luba Mason. Refresh your browser. Oh. Oh. Here I am. <laughs> okay. I'm on, but I can't hear myself. You so, won't hear yourself, no. I won't? No. You're the only one talking. Okay. I just refreshed my browser. Doug, help me out here. Yes, people are commenting for the diva. Just welcome everybody. Am I ready to talk? You're talking. Okay. Yay! John Johnson. Hi, everybody. It's Luba Mason. Uh, as if you didn't know. Um, we're at the after party. This is really throwing me, Doug. Come over here. <laughs> um, I can't because I'm seeing myself looking at all of this. It's all like backtrack. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. I'm new at this, guys. I'm really sorry. <laughs> But welcome to the after party. I hope you all have your little glass of something with you. I do, because I've never done this before. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the show, very much so. And I'm reading these comments. They're just awesome. First of all, I got this, I got a message from Michelle, who I went to high school with, for God's sake. And, um, okay, here we go. We got, we got our first question, and Michelle says... Um, how did you come up with the idea for this project? Uh, it is so unique. Um, I came up with it because uh, my last band was a six-piece band, and um, it was uh, really hard to get gigs and, and to um, get exposure for this band, and so I thought it might be easier to downsize the, the band itself for my next project. And so... Um, my producer in Brazil said, why don't you downsize to a trio? And I said, no, I don't really want to do a trio because it's uh, piano, bass, and drums. Everybody does that. And uh, I wanted to do something unique. And I had a vibraphone in my last band. So I said, I want to keep the vibraphone. So he said, suggested, why don't you try vibraphone and bass? And I started thinking about that and listening to that um, lineup in my head, and I liked the idea. So actually, I got myself a, a, a bass player, and I kept my, my vibraphonist, and we did some gigs in town just to kind of try it out and see what was going on and whether people responded to it or not. And um, people did. They loved it. They, were, they really loved this, this uh, lineup that we had. Um, so anyway, I, um, I saw the positive feedback and I thought I'm going to do an album and, um, of course I Googled it and it was never done before. This lineup has never been done before, voice, vibraphone, and bass. And I thought even better, um, to do something new and fresh, hopefully. And, um, and then I thought the repertoire would be very eclectic to challenge this, this lineup. And so I picked a very eclectic repertoire and I wanted to keep it as, as unique as possible. And, um, uh, I think we pulled it off. Thank you, Michelle, for asking me that. And I see, oh my God, Richard Gomez. Oh my God, these high school people that I went to, David Kimmelman, Nina Gilman. I'm so happy to see you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, who else, who else, who have I got here? Oh my God, John Johnson, John, what a great performance made my night. Oh, you just made my night that you're here. Thank you so much for listening in. Um, Sam, uh, even better than I remember from two years ago. Sam, you were in the audience, I remember that. You, actually, I saw you on the video, uh, on, the, on the performance itself. Um, Thank you. I, um, that was fun watching it myself, I have to say. 
Um, we see you, we see you. Oh, brava. Karen, Karen Kohler. Oh, thank you for tuning in. Oh, this makes me so happy. This is so much fun. <laughs> um, brava diva, fantastic. Thank you very much. Michael Holloway, absolutely magical show, Luba. I loved it. Thank you so much, Michael, for, for that and for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I, I really love hearing the reactions from people, um, you know, because I, I, they're authentic. It's, it's uh, I think because of the project being different, um, you're not always sure if somebody is going to like it or not um, because it's new and it hasn't been tried out before. So your comments are really um, making my night actually quite a bit. Oh, Roy. Hello, Roy. How are you? Um, Roy Holland, my manager, is, is here. Hi, Luba. Hi, Roy. Um, George Sanchez. Hi, George. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, you guys are all like really making my night here. I'm scrolling down. Um, oh, Jorge, it's Jorge. Oh my gosh, when are you coming to Panama? Well, as soon as this COVID thing uh, settles down a little bit, I would love to come in. Um, oh, thank you for tuning in, Jorge, so much. Um, question. What was the first song you picked to be on the album? Um, I think it, the first song that I picked was um, the very first song that I sang, uh, Box TV Wonder and Janelle Monet by Skip Sheary, because I had done a workshop of Skip's um, in the city. He had written a musical, the music for a musical, and um, whenever I do a workshop, I like to, if I haven't, if I'm not familiar with the, the composer, I, I like to check out their music. And I checked out Skip's uh, album, and this was one of the songs on his album. And I went, oh, this is really cool. This is fun. And it's different, and people don't know it, and it's new. So that was the first song that I chose for this, for this uh, set list. Um... Thank you. The show was great. Um, we love you. <laughs> um, who else? Oh, what was what? What's the other stuff? Oh, who? This is Maria. Maria, who makes all the arrangements? So amazing! You do Beatles, heavy metal, Slovak, the Slovak song Cherešnie, and you put your own spin to it. Really great. The arrangements were done by um, several different people. Um, I know the the song Say It is by um, my vibraphonist, Joe Locke. Um, Toxicity, the heavy metal tune song, uh, was by uh, my musical director in my last band, Mixtura. His name is Felipe Fournier. And, um, uh, a couple of the other arrangements are also by my co-producer, Renato Neto. Uh, he did Waters of March and I believe 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover as well. Um, so, and I also had a hand in with some of the, some of the arrangements as well. So I think that's what kind of gave it um, a nice mix, really. It wasn't like one person did all the arrangements. Uh, everybody kind of had a hand in everything to um, make it as different as possible. Um, I love the way he scat sang along with the mic, with the vibraphone. It was great. And your voice is like butter, <laughs> like butter. Um, yeah, at first I remember when Joe was playing in rehearsals, Joe Locke, the vibraphonist, um, he was kind of singing along and scatting along with what he was playing. And I thought to myself, oh my, I mean, is he going to do that in performance? And, um, I, I spoke with my co-producer about that and he says, you know, it's no big deal. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of musicians do that. And actually, um, after, um, you know, I guess I just heard that. I, I thought to myself, I actually kind of started to like that a lot. Um, the fact that he was singing and scatting along with what he was playing. I thought that was really kind of cool. 
Um, oh, Katie Goldenberg, my niece. Oh, and my sister Rujana is here. Oh my gosh, congrats, always brilliant. Oh, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in so much. Um, yeah, they, they're some of my biggest supporters, my sister and, and my, my, my nieces. They're always uh, checking me out on what I'm doing and thank you so much for, for being here. Um, yeah, congrats, always brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, live from Australia, Michael Holloway. I've been a fan of yours. Gee, who knew since I saw you in 10 Commandments, the musical. Oh my God, I did 10 Commandments, the musical in, in Los Angeles. Val Kilmer was, was our um, Moses and I played his mother. Bithia. Um, I wish I could find the CD soundtrack one day too. I do have all your albums though. Thanks, Michael, so much. I, I don't know where this um uh this the CD soundtrack is of uh the Ten Commandments. It's probably on Amazon somewhere. I'm I don't know if you've I'm sure you've probably checked it out, but I, that's where I would think it would be. I don't even have a CD of it. Um but thank you for tuning in, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, Errol Rappaport, that your show was wonderful. Thank you. Dr. Thelma Reyes. Uh, oh, thank you, Dr. Thelma Reyes, for telling me to tune in to Luba. Tutto bene. Um, yes, thank you, Thelma, for, for telling Errol to, to tune in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's nice to see some new people that I don't know um, uh, tuning into the music. I mean, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Um, kind of getting your music out there and hoping that it translates to people and um, they're touched by it, they're moved by it, and uh, that's what it's all about. The arts, music, singing, um, Karen, Karen, I love the set, the set, especially Say It and the Slovak piece. Toxicity, though, was the bomb. So intricate and daring. Um, thank you. And David asks, why did you pick Toxicity? Somebody else just asked me that, um, actually, before. Um, I picked Toxicity because I really wanted to challenge this lineup. Uh, that was the idea. Since it was just voice, vibraphone, and bass, I really wanted to see all as many different genres as I possibly could and see if they worked with this lineup. Uh, so I wanted a few pop songs. Uh, I wanted some straight ahead jazz tunes. Um, I added the, the, the folk tunes, the Slovak folk song, the Spanish bolero. And um, when I was putting the set list together, I was with um, Felipe. And Felipe, I, I asked him, I said, you know, I really want some kind of a rock and roll, heavy rock and roll kind of a song. And um, he said, System of a Down. And I never heard of them. Um, so he says, check out this album. I'm sure you'll find a song or two that you, you'll like. And I listened to the album and I thought he was crazy. Um, because I was like, how is this going to translate to a vibraphone and bass? Because, I mean, heavy metal is like this wall of sound and drumming and it's loud. Um, but I came across Toxicity and and I loved the song and I loved the message. And um, so I got back to Felipe and I said, I really like this song. And he said, great. He says, because I think I've got a great chart for it. I've got a great arrangement for it. And he really pulled it off, I have to say. Felipe, thank you so much, Felipe Fournier. Um, let's get some gigs god damn it yes <laughs> yes we do i don't know when that's going to happen but i hope so um when are we going to see your next performance live in new york city um i'd like to know the answer to that too um i hope once this vaccine comes out 
uh, next year, I would think, is when it would be available for most of us, that um, sometime after that is really when it's going to happen. And so, I don't know. I mean, Broadway is supposedly scheduled to come back June 1st. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope so. But um, I would think, you know, once Broadway starts opening up, that's when the, the, the clubs are going to start opening up. And although I did hear today that uh, from, from David, uh, my social media person, that he said um, that he, there are some gigs actually in Europe starting to slowly open up. So we'll see how that, how that works. Um, what else? Any touring plans after your North Country run? Of course, David. Um, I guess whenever we come back on Broadway, um, I am assigned for a year in Girl from the North Country on Broadway. Um, and my plan is to tour this album. I really still want to tour this album, regardless of whenever that is going to be. So yes, I do plan to tour it after Girl from the North Country. Um, did you know how to play the drums before your audition for Mrs. Burke? Okay, the, the musical that um, I was doing on Broadway before Broadway was shut down by COVID uh, was Girl from the North Country. Uh, it's a um, beautiful musical written by Connor McPherson, he, the playwright, and Bob, with Bob Dylan music. And um, I play the character of Mrs. Burke in the show, and I also had to learn how to play the drums. Um, so the answer to that is no, I did not know how to play the drums before I did this. <laughs> um, so I had to learn and, um, I have to say it was kind of nerve wracking. Um, and till this, you know, till the last performance we had, every time I went on to play the drums, uh, it was, uh, definitely, uh, my heart was nonstop going nonstop because it's, it's, it was okay if I just played the drums, but the fact that I had to sing and play the drums, that's what made it more complicated. It was, um, it's doing this kind of a thing. But, uh, and also what else? I think that that might be about it for the, for the, the questions. One more. Um, oh, where can Triangle be purchased or downloaded? Um, you can get the CD, the digital downloads, and yes, once again, my, my LPs just came out. You can get them all uh, on my website at lubamason.com. Uh, yeah, that's where you can get them. So gosh, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today for the concert and for the after party. Um, and I, I have a few more thank yous that I just want to say. Uh, first of all, I want to thank broadwayworld.com for streaming our concert tonight. I want to thank uh, David Greenberg, who, who is my marketing social media person who helped me put this entire show together tonight. Um, Sam Morris and Mike Wilpozeski, my publicists, uh, Roy Holland, my manager, and last but not least, I want to thank Doug Major as my technical advisor here this evening uh, to help me with this after party. So, and I want to thank all of you guys for being here tonight. Um, I hope you had fun and I hope you really enjoy the music. It's, it seems like you did. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Cheers. Good night.